Here was the capital of the empire of the Inca, Cusco. Many fine, massive walls built by the ancient inhabitants centuries before the Spaniards came still stand. A 3,400-year-old city once located on the Tigris River has emerged from under its waters in Iraq, giving a peek into the Mitanni Empire that existed. In we, the human species, have always been curious about everything, especially when it comes to the quest for knowledge about our ancestors, our roots. We keep digging deeper. Just the thought of civilizations that are tens of thousands of years old boggles the finest minds. And as we attempt to learn more about this, what could be more exciting than discovering a lost city? Across the world, ears perk up at the mere mention of a lost city that has been rediscovered. Perhaps that could serve as a key to answering many questions about our origins. Such events of discovery tell us so much about long-gone civilizations and shed light on details that would otherwise remain a mystery. Welcome to Crunch, and today we will understand why most of these ancient cities are buried under the earth. Digging into the past In around 1350 BC, an earthquake likely destroyed most of the city named Kamun, but portions of its remnants are preserved beneath collapsed walls. During the construction of the Mosul Dam in the 1980s, humans, unaware of what was hidden underneath, flooded the place with water. Although recently, an unforeseen event led to the re-emergence of this 3,400-year-old city from the Tigris River in Iraq due to a drought revealing the hidden civilization. Well, they say nature speaks to us in its own language. Droughts across Iraq have been a major cause of humanitarian concern but this most recent one has provided archaeologists with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to dig into this ancient lost city. According to Ivana Pulgitz, a junior professor of ancient Near Eastern archaeology at the University of Freiburg in Germany, who also worked on the excavation, archaeologists knew about Kamun by then, but they hadn't investigated the site. Researchers have been familiar with Kamun since 2010, However, they weren't able to dig until the reservoir's water level was low enough during a prominent drought in 2018. They had a second chance to evaluate the town in 2022. With Iraq suffering from extreme drought, the country was forced to draw large amounts of water from the Mosul Reservoir. And with the drastic drop in water level, what surfaced from the reservoir's banks was Kamun. A team of archaeologists rushed to the Mosul Reservoir to investigate the old city. Within a short time, the researchers succeeded in largely mapping the city. In addition to the palace, which had already been documented during a short campaign in 2018, several other large buildings were uncovered, a massive fortification with walls and towers, a monumental multi-story storage building, and an industrial complex. Despite the fact that the walls are composed of sun-dried mud bricks and have been submerged for more than 40 years, the research team were astounded by their condition, sometimes reaching heights of several meters. They were also able to find 100 ancient cuneiform clay tablets in five ceramic jars, which may reveal more lost history about the city and that period of time. They claimed that the lost city was the ancient city of Saikiku, an important trade center of the Bronze Age Mitannian Empire. Perhaps here we can say that somehow modern-age humans are to be blamed for this city's disappearance. But what about the archaeological site of Troy? That consists of nine major levels, the earliest dating from the Early Bronze Age and the latest from the Byzantine era. Well, maybe we can hold our ancestors responsible for this. The city was said to have been ruled by Troad, the ancient region of Anatolia, until the Trojan War led to its complete destruction at the hands of the Greeks. And in the Archaic Era, a new city was built at the site where the legendary Troy was believed to have stood. However, starting in 1871, Heinrich Schillermann and Frank Calvert, who excavated the site, found the remains of numerous earlier settlements. Of course, this provided yet another load of archaeological ore. And then we have other sites, like Pompeii, an ancient Roman city in Campania, Italy. The city was buried beneath a blanket of ash after a huge eruption from Mount Vesuvius showered volcanic debris over it for us to find later. Even though these cities have remained hidden from us for the longest time, 
Ruins from sites like these assist archaeologists to learn how people lived in specific times and places. Studying the ruins helped them understand what these people's daily lives were like, how they were governed, how they interacted with each other, and what they believed in and valued. But how come these ancient cities end up being buried in the ground? Who puts them in their graves? Why are the relics from the olden days buried? Reducing it to bare bones, let's just classify the underlying reasons in two major categories. Firstly, it has a lot to do with actions of people. Like the construction of the dam that gulped down Kamun, or the settlements built one over the other at... Troy? Yeah, conflicts caused the destruction of structures, and it happened often in the ancient world. Conquering kingdoms would build on top of the ruins of the cities they destroyed. New houses were built on top of the ruins of old ones, because hauling away rubble was labour-intensive work. And it was much easier to simply spread it out and build straight on top. Besides this, Settlements constantly imported food and building materials for the population, but getting rid of waste and rubbish was a much lower priority. Trash and sewage would eventually pile up and over a prolonged period of time decay and form layers of dirt. Secondly, different natural processes also contributed to all of this. Occasionally, some sites were subjected to disasters like earthquakes that initially destroyed Kamun, or floods or volcanoes, similar to the one which occurred in Pompeii, while sometimes it just happens to be the effect of time. Ruins in unstable places like deserts and swamps got slowly swallowed up. Winds carry sediments along and, when blocked by a structure, get deposited on it. It is a long process, but over a period of time it manages to form blankets of dust on these structures. The Sphinx, for example, was uncovered underneath sand that measured up to its head. Or, talking about recent times, the discovery of an ancient city in Egypt that was buried under sand until 2020, dubbed the Lost Golden City of Luxor. Peculiarities of human settlement occupying areas near rivers to fulfill the water demands also resulted in these rivers dumping sediments over them. Rivers periodically flooded and added a layer of silt. If and when the people migrated, sites that were finally abandoned for a long time became overgrown with vegetation that gradually decayed to build up a layer of topsoil. The natural forces gradually reduced it to an odd bump on the landscape. The future of archaeology As more archaeologists dictate their time to digging and searching the earth for more evidence of the past, one can expect more of these cities to be discovered in the future. And with the upcoming technology, we can hope for this search to get a bit easier. Archaeologists believe ground-penetrating radar GPR tools could revolutionize our understanding of ancient settlements. By implementing this technology, more of the Roman city of Valeri Novi was revealed without digging an inch. This technique shoots electromagnetic pulses into the earth and registers the signals reflected by underground structures. Thanks to its high resolution, GPR visualizes the plots of land that make up a city. Still, the tool has its downsides, including the amount of time required to analyze data. Processing a 2.5-acre section takes 20 hours. The researchers are still working through the Valeri Novi data, but they anticipate completing the project within the next year. The future has a lot to offer. Perhaps in the distant future, one of our descendants will gaze upon the ruins of the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty or the Great Wall of China and wonder about the settlements around like we do about the Great Pyramids of Giza or Stonehenge. It wouldn't be a surprise if, by then, a lot of present-day cities were already submerged. What would future archaeologists think of us? Will they be able to find our remains at all? Will we be one of the things mentioned in their thesis? What are your thoughts on our story being featured on their history channels? Leave us a comment on it and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If topics like these interest you, do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we upload more amazing content. As always, thank you for watching Crunch History. <laughs>